please let us uh, proclaim the wonderful proclamation of God's word in our lives and especially what God has done for us because uh, it is uh, very encouraging. It also allows us to be on the offense when we know what the word of God says and then we are able to use it so that when Satan, the deceiver, the enemy, devil, tries to use anything to you know, confuse us, to deceive us, to do anything, we can easily use God's word and uh, uh, let him know. Because in Matthew 4, 4, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, when the devil came to try to deceive him, he said, it is written. God's word says. So if God's word says that is what I'm going to believe. I'm going to stand upon God's word. I won't let you deceive me. So, Holy Father, it's uh, always uh, wonderful that we are able to use uh, your word to go back to you. Because God says, test me, tell me, try me, tell me what you want uh, and I will do it for all. So, uh, here is an example of what we want to tell God or what God has told us and that we are repeating it. And we are proclaiming, we are affirming it in our lives that uh, this is what God's word says. So let us proclaim Romans 3, 22 to 26. My dearest, most gracious, holy, heavenly Father, and merciful Jehovah Ra, the Lord my shepherd, hallowed be your name. Thank you for the great redemption that my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ purchased for me with his precious blood sacrifice on Calvary's cross. My soul blesses you for your continuous love and mercy upon my life. Holy Father, I genuinely repent of my sins and pray for your mercy and forgiveness. Please grant me your Holy Ghost power to guide my Christian walk. Heavenly Father, your righteousness through faith in my Lord and Jesus Christ is revealed to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. For all of us have sinned and fall short of your glory, but being justified freely by your grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, my Lord, whom you, Holy Father, set forth as a propitiation by your begotten Son's blood sacrifice through faith to demonstrate your righteousness because in your forbearance you had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time your righteousness that you might be just and the justifier of anyone who has faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Father, for your great salvation plan to rescue me, and I humbly submit this prayer to your throne of grace for continuous sanctification in the blessed name and righteousness of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Romans 3, 22 to 26. We may be seated. And I want to add a few words to this, that when we look at what this scripture verse is saying, we can read it, uh, you know, pick the scriptures ourselves and then read exactly what he's saying here. The meaning of what this scripture is saying is that God is telling us through the Apostle Paul, through the Holy Spirit, that through the righteousness of God. God is righteous, and because of the righteousness that is in him, through faith, he allowed us 
he sort of allowed us to see, he revealed his righteousness to us through what he did for us in the Lord Jesus Christ by allowing us so that when we believe, when we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are, it doesn't matter who, that's why I say for there's no difference. It means that whether you are a new or old uh, believer, whether you're a child or old, whether you are, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Robert, what, whoever you are, as long as you have the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, remember we keep saying faith, and that faith means first you have to go to the Lord, to God and say repentance towards God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. So, and he says, verse 23, that for all I've sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but being justified, justified means just as if you have not sinned, since and you know freely he gave it to us it's like you you you've sinned all right god knows you've sinned god knows i've sinned god knows we have sinned but because of his grace he gave us that redemption he redeemed us through the lord jesus christ and then he says whom verse 24 25 now whom you holy father set forth as a propitiation which means that God said the Lord Jesus Christ as, let's use the word, uh, as one who pays. So he paid for our sins. We didn't have to pay. That's the propitiation means that he, instead of uh, just like what we do for our children for school, instead of us paying for the school fees, instead of the child paying for the school fees, the father, the mother, the parent pays for the school fees. And then instead of uh, on the bus, you are on the train, on the airplane, ticket, whatever, Somebody pays for it. That's a propitiation. Christ paid it on our behalf through the blood sacrifice because in the spiritual sense, before anything can be done well, in, the, in this world, we say you have to sign. Once you sign, it is done. But in the, uh, but in the spiritual sense, you have to kill blood. You have to shed blood. There's no remission. There, without uh, uh, shedding of blood, and there's no remission according to God's word. So, in this case, Christ had to shed his blood, and the blood had to be pure, and it couldn't be an angel, it couldn't be uh, some, I mean, it couldn't be anybody else. And so, only a pure, righteous person can pay for us. And so, God, through his righteousness, through what he knew, that the only thing he could do is to allow his son to die for us, so in this case, that's what we are saying here, that the, as a propitiation by the Lord Jesus Christ, the sacrifice, and that through faith, to demonstrate his righteousness, because in the forbearance, he, he passed over the sins that were previously committed, which means that all the sins that we had committed, he decided that, oh, through my love, of, through, through my love for everybody, I'm going to allow everybody. So we should know that Christ paid for the sins of Father Adam and Mother Eve. So he did that. So any sin that anyone had committed, he wiped it all clean by that one sacrifice. And so the devil was playing a game, but God had to overcome. God had to come in. And so by demonstrating that love, that righteousness, that forbearance, that holiness, he did that for us. So that every sin that we have committed, no, wiped clean. And even sins that we, have to co we are going to commit, not deliberately, but because we know that we are in the world, and the devil may try to force us to do something, but God is ready to wash the blood, use the blood and to wash away that sin. There is verse 26, to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that we might be just. That not, I mean, not we actually, that he, he is the one who is just. He is the one who is holy. He is the one who redeems. So he will be the just and the justifier of anyone who has faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's a simple process. This is a salvation message. It's a message that should be repeated for everyone to know because we have seen and we know Romans 5 it says that you know in spite of what we have done 
while we were yet sinners and Christ died for us. If Christ died for us, then why would he do that? It's out of the love. And so this proclamation is really showing to us the love that Christ has for us, that the love that God has for us, and that he wanted us to enjoy all these blessings. So that is uh, the meaning of the proclamation for this week. So we thank God.